Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the town hall session. Uh, I'm Killick, I'm the Earl Marshal of the Middle Kingdom. Tonight, we're gonna just do a general town hall. We're gonna give a update for the uh, different areas that we have, some general notes and then specific areas. Uh, and then we're gonna take questions if anybody has any, any questions at all. Um, so this is supposed to be kind of free form and, and open. Uh, so if you have a question, um, try to hold it to the end, but if it's really urgent, uh, I guess pop up and we'll we'll answer that question. Um, during the during Dog and Anne Marie's reign, we had listening posts with each, each of the different areas. Uh, and I thought that went pretty well. Um, I thought that this time we try something different and try to have everybody in one. Um, so one of the things I'm trying to do is, is with this office is be a little bit more open and transparent. So that's giving people updates and things like that. Um, so when, on the things that we have generally accomplished area, uh, we recently completed a waiver review, uh, which I really appreciate all the marshals and all the combatants getting their waivers signed and sent into the clerk of the roster so that we can uh, have that information available and be in compliance with the society handbooks and society rules. Um, I think that that's really, really great. Um, and that also makes it so that our information is is true. It's a more accurate representation of who is participating in the in our activity. Um, and that's nice to know too, to know who is actually active. Uh, the next topic that I have, um, the uh, Uber forms that people sign at practices should be sent in at least quarterly to the clerk of the roster. Uh, waivers from events should be included with the event packet and sent in after the event. So that's all areas. So if you if you uh, run an event, you have them fill out the, everybody fills out the packet, send that into the clerk of the roster as soon as you can after the event. Um, your quarterly reports need to, or your your Uber practice, your Uber uh, waivers, the one that everybody signs needs to go in uh, at least quarterly. Um, Archery has a really nice process where they upload it to uh, to their the uh, Google Drive attached to the the uh, group account, the group Marshall account. Um, and that's great. Uh, there's no reason to change that process. I think that that's that's wonderful. Um, I wish that we could all be uh, quite as together as as archery is. Uh, I think they're doing a really good stuff there. Um, soon, some things that we have work we're working on. Uh, we're going to be adding an expiration date to authorization cards. So on the the website itself in the authorization database, we're going to be adding a column for uh, expiration date so that we can have that on there. We've heard that uh, there are some kingdoms when our people travel who have um, who have questioned our authorization cards because they don't show an expiration date. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just change that. We're going to we want to make things as easy as we can for our people. Um, hopefully it's not too hard, but you know we're going to live and learn. Um, we are also going to add uh, whether somebody has a background check to the to the authorization card, um, so that you can see if you are trying to find a. Uh, a youth marshal or a youth officer, you can go and see if they're having that. What we're going to show on that is we're going to show the expiration date of their of their background check. So you can kind of get a sense of of where they're at. Um, I do want to pull up. I asked today uh, for the background check process. I asked the deputy for uh, background checks, Michael Calhoun, um, to give me the the latest and greatest. Uh, where, oh, he emailed it to me. Um, I'm going to pull up my email here so I can I can uh, read that off to everybody. Um, I thought that the the process was uh, good, and oh, he sent it to me here. So I didn't read. I just got this right before the meeting, so I wasn't quite as prepared on this one. So one moment. Uh, if I had another back uh, joke, this would be a great time for it, but I don't have one right at hand. Uh, but that's okay. Okay. So the Middle Kingdom background check procedure. Uh, as of as of today, is the person seeking to have a background check should contact the background check deputy at background.midrum.org to start the process. Uh, the background check deputy will reply with an email asking to complete the following steps. Uh, send an email containing uh, some information, uh, SEA name, mother name, mailing address, email, membership number, membership expiration date, uh, reason for background check, uh, that could be you want to be a youth armored, youth rapier, youth archery, group youth marshal, youth marshal at large, giving why, region, uh, local group, and initial background only, who did you submit your change of officer form? Oh, so you also have to submit a change of officer form. Uh, so you'll send a change of officer form to the respective deputy on my side, so um, archery or youth combat, 
uh, for that. Once that's been submitted to the proper, pe uh, the proper people, the background check deputy will present the information to the Kingdom Seneschal for approval. The Kingdom Seneschal will approve the request. Uh, the background check deputy will add the person's name and email address to the society background check request list. Uh, they will then send an email informing the person who requested it that they have been approved by the Kingdom and to expect an email from the background check company in the near future. Uh, the background check company will then send an email directly with more information that the email address will come from administrator at telecorp.net. Uh, they will it will include a link to a secure site to provide more information. Um, once you've done that, then the requester should then uh, notify the background check deputy that they've submitted their information. Without this notification, the deputy will have no indication of possible issues that could delay their approval. So you're letting them know so they can keep an eye on it. Uh, and then the background check deputy will monitor the society background check list for the, the requester's name to be added. Um, and once it's added, the background deputy will send an email to the requester, notifying them that the background check has been completed and when it will expire. Uh, and then you'll receive an email two months before the expiration date to see if the requester wishes to renew. So that was a, a lot of information, but it's good that we have some process and we have some, some information here. Um, it's important thing to know that if you want to be background checked, uh, you have to have be a member. Um, then uh, we are pay to play, but as we are all marshals, marshals are required to be a marshal or are required to be a member anyway. So that shouldn't be too big a hardship for for people who are who are uh, marshals already. Um, any questions or thoughts on on that? Okay, uh, great. Um, we also just recently came out with new MIT forms for armored, rapier, and combat archery. Uh, we've kind of streamlined the form. Um, we've brought it into the modern day. I think the the most common version I saw was about 10 years old. Uh, it's time to to probably update that a little bit to, to reflect what we're doing. Um, and we've streamlined it on there before we were requiring signatures for melee that could only be done by a deputy kingdom or a marshal or myself, uh, written now for armored combat. Um, we're okay with anybody do with signing it. The marshal of the event can sign saying that you um, marshaled a melee and that will be, we trust people to do that. Uh, so that's the end of my my general information. Next, we're gonna go to the, the different areas. Welcome in one first six or five. I'm gonna go ahead and mute them. Okay. Uh, so on the armored front, uh, Sir Drust has stepped down as my deputy for armored combat. The position is is currently open, and I'm accepting applications through uh, May 14th, through this Sunday. If you're interested, send me an email, uh, marshall at midrum.org. Um, we are, for this crown tournament, uh, we are trying to, ordinarily at crown tournament, we've been having um, senior marshals uh, run all the lists and be all the marshals for that. Um, but we are looking to expand that. We want to have more people get the the experience and knowledge. Uh, so if you are in, uh, an unbelted armored marshal and you want a marshal crown, uh, drop me a line letting me know. Um, and we'll see about uh, making sure that everything's good and we'll get you on that list. Um, we do expect the people who are marshal and crown to wear uh, marshal garb, to uh, wear the uh, black and gold uh, kind of be on theme and have at least a marshal surcoat. Um, we have also been doing uh, armored martial refresher courses. So those are going to be continuing on at different events. We need to get some scheduled online too. Uh, then for combat archery, uh, our Nora is now the, the deputy for that. Um, and with combat archery, we've tried to streamline the process on that a lot for being a, a marshal for authorizing. And uh, I've gotten reports that just from this year so far, we've added three marshals for combat archery. And that's more than we had all of last year. So in the, the first five months of this year, we have three. Um, I think that's great. And I know of at least a couple other people who are, are in process or who are working on it. So that's that's fantastic. Uh, when we get to Siege, um, Dirk Edward of Frisia is now the deputy for that. Uh, he tells me that they are revising the authorization and MIT process. Um, I, I expect it to be similar to what we've done for combat archery. So hopefully we'll, we'll get a bump there too. Uh, and then on the... The rapier front, uh, Maestro Amirabai, is running um, role refresher courses like we've been running for the armored uh, side as well. Um, on For rapier, they are required. Uh, she's requiring everybody to, to, to attend the class, to take the online test, and uh, fill out a form letting her know that you've done that. 
um, which I think is a, a great uh, idea. Um, we're kind of doing this as a test pilot. Uh, tr try to be open and, and transparent on this. Um, this is something we've thought about doing for Armored as well, uh, but we're going to try it out with Rapier first, see how that goes. Um, and so on the Rapier side, everybody has to have it done by September 16th. Uh, then when we talk about uh, archery, archery is currently doing, uh, they're doing an adolato experiment, and that's a, a joint experiment with uh, with thrown weapons, which is kind of exciting to have a little bit of crossover there. Um, archery has also been having some continuing ed classes too. They've been having um, uh, um, instructor courses and, and things like that, which I think are are great. Um, and then on thrown weapons, we as well with the they also have the adolato experiment with thrown weapons. It's a joint experiment. Uh, but there's also the plumbata experiment. We just started that this past weekend. And then um, today, as uh, or this past weekend, Uthan had a plumbata class. And as a result of that class, they uh, came up with a few small revisions that they wanted to have to, to that rule set. Uh, so we have um, released a revision of the Throne Weapons Handbook uh, this morning. So that's available currently on the, the uh, Earl Marshall webpage, um, as well as on the Throne Weapons hand, uh, page. Um, we should talk about that for just a moment. If you go to the Earl Marshall webpage, uh, one of the first things you're gonna the first thing you'll see is a link to the authorization database. Um, the second thing is a link to all the most current editions of all of the handbooks. Um, so that's the to my mind, that's the best place. That's the easiest place to get that information. Uh, we do have the the documents library. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble getting that updated, so I don't know how current that is. Uh, the the links on the web page I have complete control over the document library I don't have as much control over um, the help desk does what they can and I think that they're great uh, but the best place is the the front page of the Earl Marshall page on the Kingdom website um, and I have uh, from Youth Rapier uh, Odo Umi is now my deputy. She is working on a new edition of the handbook. I think our, our last edition is about five years out of date for uh, for Youth Rapier. Um, and she tells me that the uh, Youth Rapier currently has 33 marshals, four MITs, and five youth authorized. Um, I assume that's uh, youth authorized to, to fight uh, children, not uh, five youth who are authorized to fight, but five adults authorized to fight youth, to fight the youth. Um, that's kind of a weird way to, to phrase that. Um, and then the the other areas under my purview are uh, youth armored, equestrian, and hound coursing, and I don't have a a specific update for any of those areas. Um, does anybody have any questions at this moment? Okay. Uh, the oh, uh, we have a a hand that went up. Um, Samantha De Crane. Uh, you are muted currently. Sorry. Okay. Um, quick question, because you touched on throwing weapons and revising the handbook and everything. Yeah. Do you have an idea of when you will have the new marshals test done? I have two MITs that are kind of chilling in purgatory while we wait on that. Yeah, Uthin gave me an update on that to, uh, earlier. Um, he's working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check the email to see if he gave me a, a ETA on when he th thought that would be done. Um, he says uh, I should have the new test finished within a few days, um, and then he and I will review it, and then we'd be putting it out there. So, uh, hopefully, just a few days. Okay, she muted herself, so I'm going to take it for that was a, a good answer. Um, the next thing that I wanted to, to touch on is um, there have been it's come come to my attention that there is a, a fair bit of concern and worry about uh, recent actions by the, the board of directors where they have sanctioned some some rapier marshals and uh and that has a lot of people worried that what could happen to them uh that if they're out there doing their their job that they're gonna um, be punished by the board of directors and um i'm here to tell you that i i am not worried about that uh, I, of the marshals in this kingdom who are most likely to be sanctioned by the board of directors for, for something that happens, um, it's going to be myself and it's going to be my deputies. We are the, the people who are the most likely to, to face that. We're the people who help run Penzik. So that's our, our big exposure to that kind of thing. And I'm not worried about it at all for myself. Um, 
I'm not worried about it for any of my deputies. Uh, I'm not worried about it for any marshal in, in the kingdom. In the, the mid-realm, we have a strong tradition of having policies. We have a strong uh, tradition of following our rules. We have a strong uh, reputation of being sensible people. We're Midwesterners. We have good heads on our shoulders. We follow, we like our bureaucracy. We people make jokes about the mid-realm being staunch, sta uh, being sticklers for rules and being sticks in the mud and all of that. And we are, but uh, I think that that's good. We have our forms, we have our policies. Um, and that, uh, yeah, in the comments, welcome to the mid-realm, have some paperwork. Exactly. We, all of these things, we follow our rules, we follow our policies, we have good heads on our shoulders, we have good policies. Um, I have full faith in all of my deputies and in all of my my uh, marshals that we aren't going to, um, that we're going to be well thought out and, and do something. Uh, if we do get punished for, if somebody does get punished for for doing the for following the rules, I would be shocked. Um, but I would be, I would stand by your side. I would do everything that I can to, to help protect you too. Um, if you aren't following the rules, I'm going to come down on you for that too. Um, that's part of of my my job is to make sure that we we follow our rules. Um, and I think that we do a good job of that here. Uh, I know other kingdoms. I, as I've been going around, I have uh, I go and I look at other kingdoms' web pages or their their rules. I try to see what how they're doing it. And I think the midroom has a really good. Uh, really good program we have a really good policy um we have rules uh we have policies and we have traditions um i go to other i look at other kingdoms and they have none of that so we we're better uh i mean i'm a i'm staunchly a mid-realm uh fan i think the mid-realm is the best kingdom in the known world and i really don't have anything to worry about that um yeah i think that's everything that i wanted to say on that matter um, but if anybody has a question i'm happy to field any questions Yeah, Diedrich. Just to reinforce, I've been telling my archery marshals that I have their back. Um, if they have a problem, go to their regional and their regional will send it to me. We'll get it fixed before it becomes a problem. But I have been as clear as I can that I will back up the marshals, not create a bigger problem out of it. Absolutely. And uh, Diedrich has had a, a rock. I have absolute faith in him. He has been a, a rock. Uh, he has been fantastic as a, a deputy. Um, Nihilus, did you have something you want to say too, Kazmar? Uh, yeah, just a quick question. You commented about making some uh, improvements and uh, updates to the Marshall database. Yeah. Have you figured out how you're going to indicate the difference between a full combat archery marshal and an inspection only marshal? Yeah, we're just going to, we have, um, we're just going to add in when somebody actually has it, they're going to be marked as, um, in the database, it's it's all authorizations. So I know we think of martial art in, in weapon styles, but it's really in the database, it's all the same field. Uh, and we can create as many of those as we want. So all we're going to do is we'll, we'll have it, we'll say like combat archery inspection marshal will be, uh, that might be a little clunky for the word, but it's going to say something like that. It'll be clear on there when we have, when somebody passes through that. We'll, we'll add them in. Okay, well, I, I, I bring this up because uh, there are, you know, I'm the Penamere Regional, and there are a number of individuals in Penamere who are listed as combat archery marshals who should be inspection only because they are not armored combatants in any way, shape, or form. So that's something that we've also changed recently too, that the rules did state in the past that if you want to be authorized in a particular style, if you want to be a um, yeah. an combat marshal or a rapier marshal, that you had to be currently a, a marshal or you had to be a combatant in that style. Uh, we have um, an aging population. Uh, and it seems to be, to me, that people who were previously combatants uh, have a lot of knowledge and a lot to give still. And we should not just yeah. say, oh, you can't fight anymore, so you can't be a marshal. Uh, so what we've done is on a case-by-case -case basis, um, yeah. people who uh, who uh, let myself know or my my deputy know uh, can go, we can approve them and they can continue on to serve in that area, in that capacity. Um, if you have people that you, you feel should be a combat archery inspection only marshal, uh, send that list to myself and our Nora and we'll, we'll take a look and we'll okay. investigate it. 
Um, but we'll we'll go there. Just because somebody is not authorized in it does not mean that they they might not still be a valid marshal in that area. Um, there, I think um, he's referring to a handful of people that became inspection only type marshals before the requirement for combat archery marshal said that you had to be authorized. So some of these people have been inspecting for a long time now. So I'm, I'm glad to hear there's a place for them to go. Yeah, absolutely. If we get that list, I mean, it's really just going to reach out to people and say, um, hey, this this is where we're at. And then we'll we'll go from there. We'll, we'll talk to our NORM. We'll make that call. Um, yeah, be, I think I yeah, that list. Not really hard. Yeah, to I, I, yeah, I have at least three individuals in Penamere who never were armored combatants. They were target archery marshals who, under the old program, got authorized to inspect. Okay. And I think, and the database just needs to reflect that. So I'll get a list together and I'll send it off to you. Great. Uh, and we do have a program now that if, if somebody wants to be, uh, help us with combat archery inspections, so we have a program to, to help them with that too. Um, so right. we can get more people doing that too. Contact um, me, Casmer. I'm sorry. Contact me later. Thank you. Who was that? That was Sarah. Sarah, the REC. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll drop you a line. We'll Thanks. copy our Nora and copy myself too, and we'll get that squared away. Yeah. Um, just comment, okay? if I may, you Grace. Um, I'm one of the people that you said could go for full combat archery marshal. That is Based true. on many years of being in and around things. Very true. I thank you for that. And, uh, I look forward to serving yep. the realm in that manner. Yep, we appreciate it too. All right. Um, does anybody else have any questions? All right, you have all made it pretty quick. I'm going to stop the recording.